of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, strength and vigor of my body, in the service of my fellow citizens, I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace, to work diligently and creatively, think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may, under God, increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. Hello my protecting ja family welcome back to the channel welcome back thank you very much for tuning in thank you so much for always taking the time out to listen to what we have to say and over here we have a lot to say <laughs> uh today i want to have a discussion with you concerning crime and uh, we're going to use some graphs. We're going to use some statistics. You know, we're going to go through some numbers um, uh, for a little bit. Um, not that I am a statistician, you know, or a mathematician, but I believe that if we can have this discussion in a simple way, we can all understand what is happening in Jamaica as it relates to crime, but in particular murders, because that is the biggest concern of Jamaicans, murders. So uh, we'll be going through some numbers today. We'll be making some contrasts, some correlations, and we will be trying to give you a clear understanding as to what really is happening in Jamaica. We take note that for quite a few months, I mean, from this year started, I don't think the opposition spokesperson on crime and security. I don't remember him speaking on crime uh, more than once or twice. He seemed to have drifted now to tourism. Last time we heard him he was speaking about tourism. Um, he also spoke on the economy. He, he was at one point speaking on health care. <laughs> Because I would assume there's not much um, happening in his favor on the crime front. Nothing is that sexy on the crime front for him to be speaking about. A matter of fact, the numbers are not heading in the direction that he wants them to head. So he has been focusing on other portfolios so we are going to attempt to discuss the numbers today with a view to give a clear understanding as to the direction the numbers are going so here you're looking at the map outlay of jamaica And uh, we all know the 14 parishes of Jamaica already, with Portmore soon to be the 15th. And so for many years, we have struggled with crime of all sorts in these parishes. Crimes ranging from murders, shootings, break-ins, burglary, uh, robberies, rapes, and all the other crimes you can think of. And now one of the new phenomena in the crime catalog is scamming, lottery scamming. But the main concern for all of us is always a murder rate. 
And so for many decades, we have been battling with the murder rate. And we have had it gone up, come down, go around, spin around. And everybody who come as National Security Minister have not seemed to have gotten a grip on this situation. And one of the most significant elements missing from the conversations all the time and also missing from the operations to institute policies to get crime under control. The most important element that was always missing is the financing. The financing has seemed to escape us because governments perpetually have not been able to manage the economy well so that the economy can earn enough so we can give a bigger share to fighting crime. But one thing to take into consideration is there always seem to be a situation where the PNP have managed to rock up the crime numbers. And I'm talking right across the board in all major crimes. All major crimes including murders. And we're going to be discussing a few numbers shortly. But before we get to the numbers, let us deal with the fact that unless there is significant investment in crime fighting, we will never have sensible results. And it has proven to be true for many years in and out, many decades. And the monster called major crime, particularly murder, continued to rage. Continued to rage until 2016, when the then opposition leader Andrew Holness was vying to become prime minister. And he promised that his intentions are when the Labour Party come into power. He has an aspiration that all Jamaicans must be able to sleep with their windows and doors open. That is not something that is far-fetched. But from him make the statement there, it said to me that he must intend to invest heavily in crime fighting to be positing such a position because unless he's willing to invest heavily in crime fighting then that statement is empty understanding that it wouldn't have been an overnight fix he must have considered all of that and yes came about he won the election 2016 his government started but to show you how deep this problem is it took a matter of seven years since then before we started seeing any meaningful reduction in murders because the problem was so bad that it meant that first there had to be some investments but second there had to be a continuous effort to make the criminals know that there is a new sheriff in town and they will not be running about loosely as they used to. And the government set out 
in the second term to tighten up. They did some investment in the first term by adding additional equipment to the crime fighting apparatus and I'm talking about the JDF and the JCF. Putting in the equipments, training the people to use the equipment while they are adding the equipments. And by the time we got to the sixth year, which was in the second term of the government, we saw that there were some things coming on stream. More police officers were being trained. They had vehicles now, so we saw more police patrolling. The army was being improved and in, the numbers were being increased. The equipments were being renewed. And so we started to see a difference. But understanding that if it took a matter of 30 odd years to get to this point, then it will take some time to get it under control. Now I want to show you a few of the equipments that were introduced, just a few. And I won't go too much deeper into just showing you a few. So for the JDF, we can see here, I'm just going to show you one of the ships, which is the last one that was commissioned. I think this is the Norman Manley, His Excellency Norman Manley. We now have four ships. Yes, man. Four brand new state-of-the-art modern technology ships. I think we have seven or eight helicopters in the JDF. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. We have Olipa Bird. There's also a surveillance um, plane. But they don't show much of that, so I couldn't get any image. And we have a few Bushmasters. As you can see in the bottom frame of your screen. Those are the Bushmasters. Those vehicles that appear to be war vehicles. Yes, they are Bushmasters. They are highly efficient vehicles out in the battlefield. There are other additions to the JDF. I think when this government came into power, the numbers were around about 2,000 something. I think the numbers are approaching 7,000 now, or maybe it's over 7,000 by, by this. Because the last numbers I saw dated back about three years ago. So I think they're nearing 8,000 now. Um, so they have added a hundred and... 120% or 130% maybe to the personnel in the JDF. So our JDF is being renewed. We have four ships. We have smaller vessels for the JDF. And we have efficient vehicles to keep them out in the field. The JCF is also fitted out yes man very well so there are some things that i couldn't get access to even though i know that they are available they did an expo some time ago and some things were on display so the jcf now boasts a fully equipped control um lab fully equipped and it's not just one of these labs, not just one of these controls. You know, they have different segments. I think one section controls Jamaica Eye, which is this string of cameras that is fitted right across the island. Um, the JCF also invested in mass transportation for its members. You can look at the top right-hand corner. You can see some coaster buses. You can look at the bottom right-hand corner. You see the JCF also boasts a Bushmaster. They have a couple of them, but you can see one in this. And you can see another operational um, vehicle. It is for um, mass crowd control, I think. Um, and uh, it's an operational center vehicle. 
that you can run a full operation um, from within there. Um, if you look over in the center, bottom center, you see those are some new vehicles that was recently handed over. You can look in the top, um, in the mid left hand corner, you can see that the JCF vehicles are now fitted with computers. So the police vehicle can literally drive behind you, look at your license plate and check out your license plate right away. So we have seen in the past two years that people commit acts of crimes are now being caught within hours, days. It's no longer years and decades. <laughs> hours minutes because in real time the jcf is functioning with new technology and here in this frame you can see the minister of national security honorable dr horace chang in the middle you can see antonette weems gorman and she is the chief of defense staff for the JDF, the Jamaica Defense Force, the first woman to ever lead the army in Jamaica and the Caribbean region. Or she is numbered among very few, maybe a handful, who leads their military worldwide. So we're lucky to have this experienced female. And then to the far right, we have Dr. Kevin Blake, and he's our commissioner of police. Down at the bottom, we have this sad-looking fellow, Mr. Peter Bunting. He used to be the opposition spokesman on national security. He's a former national security minister. He's the only national security minister in the history of the world who has ever been robbed and humiliated. Today, he is the opposition spokesman on a few things because these days we don't know what he is shadowing. Um, uh, maybe he's just shadowing, shadowing him himself these days. And so these are the people, the three people at the top. They are the ones who are transforming Jamaica's national security landscape. The minister who provides policy direction, um, the army, which provides the first line of defense, and our civil force, which is the police, which maintains law and order. So, as I had said before, we will be going through some crime statistics. But we'll be focusing mainly on murders. We'll be focusing mainly on murders. And here we're looking at this chart. Yeah, this, is, this chart with a few zigzag, a few up and down. And this chart represents the murder rate um, between 2001 to 2022. Yes, between 2001 to 2022. And there you can see on your left-hand side are the numbers of people who are murdered in our country between these years. And at the bottom, what you're seeing down there are the years that we'll be looking at. So between 2001, 2003, there was a slight dip in the rate um, below, little below a thousand. Considering that coming up to 2001, murder rose, I think in 1997. We'll get there. We'll get to those charts that shows the figures shortly. Murder rose to over a thousand for the first time in 1997. I mean, somehow the PMP seemed to have run a government and an economy that breed up criminals, that breed up murderers. 
So murder rose. So considering that it's coming from an eye of 1200 and something, it had a slight dip in 2003 to below 1000. I think it was 800 and something that time. And then by 2004, between 2004 and 2005, it shot back up. 2006, there was a slight dip. So it shot up to over 1600 between 2004-2005. Came back down a little bit below 1400, 2006. Take time, climb back up um, between 2007 to 2009. It peaked to 1600 and something. We'll get to the numbers shortly. But then something happened in 2010. 2010 was a Tivoli incursion, and that situation was born out of the extradition request that the United States made for Dodos. And so, even though there was some resistance from the government, Bruce Golding at the time was Prime Minister, who posited to the U.S authorities that human rights does not start at Ligani. That's where the U.S. Embassy is at. He was sending a strong message. Why? Because the PMP, we found out later that the PMP had signed a secret deal with the United States. Peter Phillips and PJ signed a secret deal with the United States so that the U.S. authorities can listen to every Jamaican phone call you depend on your phone, I talk to your woman, or I talk to your man, or your keep man, or your keep woman. The American government could have listened in for your conversation. But there was something very curious and mysterious about this new found urge to be requesting that Dudus be extradited. Because all along, Dudus, they are Jamaica under the PMP, I live life and I enjoy making millions of dollars, getting multi-million dollars from the PMP. But because the PMP saw an opportunity to get rid of the JLP government, just as they are doing now, they link up with their friends in Washington to get rid of Dudos. At the time, the Prime Minister Bruce Golding was the MP for Tivoli, where Dudos was known as a strong man. And so they figured that if they shake the tree down at Tivoli, them shake out Bruce out of power. And so said, so done. And so there was an incursion in 2010. And because there was this new mission to get Dudos, a number of the gangs had teamed up to fight back against the state. And many of them were taken out. And they were, many of them were in hiding and a cool off. So since 2010, murders started to decline. And it had a, we had a huge reduction by 2011 going into 2012, below 1,200. The PMP came in in 2012 and inherited that decline that started in 2010. And by 2013, 20, 2012 never even done good. The numbers started going back up. So it went back up to 1200 by 2013. Had another dip down to 1000 and something. So we'll get to the numbers again in, in the slides coming up. In 2014, it had that dip. But then by 20, before 2014 was out, it started going back up. And so the general election in 2016, the government took over. It was already on an upward trend. By 2017, it peaked again above 1600 by 2018 it started to fall by 2019 it came back down below 1400 and it kept stable for a little bit into 2020 by 2021 it started to peak up 2022 it sort of flattened off below above 1400 but below 1600 this other chart is showing the murder rate between 1962 to 2002 so it took us a little bit further back 
And so you can see in 1962, um, murders were below 100. By the time we got to 1979, it's, it, it, it rose a little bit. It rose to about 400. And then it came back down to 300 and something. It came back down to 300 in 1979. Um, in 1980, that bloody election, yes, man, it spiked up to 800 and something. But then by the time the election went, JLP took over at the time, it came right back down to 400 and something. It continued that way out until 1989. By the time we got to 1990, that's when the murders started inching up. By 1992, it went back up to 60, 600. By 1996, it went up to 800. By 1997, it went over 1,000. Almost, yeah, uh, almost 1,100. Yeah, in 2002, for the first time, it went over 1,100. And then it kept climbing after that. So these are some charts now that are just going to show you the raw numbers. Raw, 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 raw numbers. You're just going to look at the numbers and you can understand what happened in the year. So 1962 murders were 63. And it continued that way. 70, 63. 1966, it went up to 111. 1968, 110. Uh, 1969 um 153 by 1970 came back down um a little so 1969 it came back down a little bit 1970 by 1972 murders went up now to 188 who was in power 1972 the pmp boy them look like them always find a way to breed up criminal by 1975 it went up to 166 266 by 1979, it was 351. That the bloodiest election in the history of Jamaica, that political election in the 1980s, 1980 election, 889 people were killed. By the time Siaga took over in 1981, murders went down to 490. 490. He found a way to fix the system murders came down to 490 by 1982 murders were 405 1983 it went up back a little bit to 424 1984 it went back up to 484 by 1985 it came down to 434 1986 449 by 1988, it went. It came back down to 414. So there was some strategy there managing murders. 1989 was election period again. Murders it went from 414 up to 439. By 1990, when the PMP came back in power, murders were again 542. By 1991, 561. And so it continued and continued and continued. By 1992, it never even waited for go up by 10 and 20. By 1992, murders went up to 629. By 1995, murders were 780. I'm just going to skip some numbers, but you can keep track as you look at the chart. By 1997, for the first time in Jamaica's history, murders went over 1,000. Under who? The PMP. 1,038. In 1998, they found a way to bring it back down, 953. In 1999, they brought it down to 849. Here, 2,887. And, and so on. By 2002, murders went back up to over 1,000. 1,045. 2003, they found a way to bring it back down to 976. To, by 2004, it shot up to 1,471. 2005, 1,674. 
By 2006, they found a way to bring it down to 1,340. 2007, it went up to 1,584. In 2007, there was a general election. I think it was September. Was it September 3 or September 7? Something like that. I don't have the date at hand now. But I think that general election. But that year, murders, the year ended with murders, 1,584. So Bruce Golden came in in 2007. 2008, murders went up, 1,619. 2009, continued up, 1,683. And then that situation in 2010, that saw murders falling again, and it fell to 1,447. Now, as we can see, the downward trend continued into 2012. When the PMP took over power, it murders were now at 1,102. 2013, it continued. It's low numbers. It, were, it was going up because it went up to 1,202, 100 more than the year before. But those were considered low numbers. In 2014, there was a dip again. Whatever Peter Bunting did, th that was some strategy that seemed to have given him um, a little um, ease right there. But by 2015, murders went back up to 1,208. And election in 2016, I think, was in September again. And by that, September ended with murders up 1,354. And by the time 2017 with Andrew in a power, Murders went back up, shot right back up to 1,647. 2018, they found a way. They used a strategy that brought it down in 2018 to 1,287. 2019, they still managed to keep it below the 1,500 mark, 1,339. 2020, they kept it at 1,323. And 2021, you can um, um if you remember i think we don't have any figure all right what that what the heading on this um chart is saying now is raw numbers parish breakdown so basically you can look at the parishes between 2023 and 2024 and you can see what the numbers are saying um so the numbers are laid out there plain as day. You can just look at it and you can see the difference. Now, I'm going to make a correlation between 2022, which is the last high number murder rate we had, uh, or up to 2022, the strategy has not yet had not yet begun to work to bring the numbers down. I mean, closer to the end of 2022, there was a slight reduction. So it was closer to the end of the year that the reduction started and it continued over into 2023. And then 2023 continued right through and it came over into 2024. So a more sustained reduction in the numbers because apparently all the investments that the government had made seem to be now bearing fruit at this point and so we i consider that if the investments continue if the budget for national security continues to be increased continues to introduce the technology and the new equipment and to train the men and women of the jdf and jcf to be you know more astute and efficient then i guess as we go by the numbers will continue to fall but there's something very important i want you to look at while looking at these numbers so 2023 the the year ended with the murder rate because remember we're looking at murders now the year ended with the murder rate at eight percent so far in 2024, the murder rate is at 17%. Now, what I'm going to do, as I said to you, I'm not a statistician, I'm not a mathematician, 
but I think I can count from 1 to 10 or 1 to 100. And I can reason out things in my simple way so that I can understand it. And if I can reason it out in a simple way for me understand it, maybe you can understand it too. Now, I want you to look at this, how significant it is. If murders reduce by 8% in 2023 and continue to be reduced in 2024, and up to this point in 2024 that this video is being done, murders are 17%. Let us put the two numbers together, 17 and 8. And how much we get? We get 25%. So, be, so when we do that now, we're going to compare 2023 and 2024 at 25% against 2022. Do we realize that between 2023 and 2024, murders have been reduced by 25% compared to 2022? Do we see that? But let us just look at the raw numbers in front of us for reference. Since we're in 2024 and we're dealing with 2024, we'll get back to the other complicated, simple part as I put it. So we can look in the bottom right-hand corner of this chart that is showing the subtotal. 2023, we ended the year by parish. So some of these are parishes. Let me name a parish. Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, Trelawney, St. Anne, St. Mary, Portland, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon. And then when you come into Kingston now, it is broken down into divisions. So you have the Kingston Western, the Kingston Central, um, and St. Andrew Central, St. Andrew South, St. Andrew North, St. Catherine North, St. Catherine South, then you have St. Thomas. And that's how the, the, the breakdown continues. And so for all these police divisions, we are seeing reductions for all of them. In our Westmoreland, 2023, Westmoreland have 90. At this point, because this, this chart is showing the point that the last set of numbers came out. So at this point, which is the beginning of October, the last part of September, beginning of October, Westmoreland had 90 in 2023. In 2024, Westmoreland had 74. At this point, in Anova, at this point in 2023, Anova had 55. At this point in 2024, Anova had 39. In St. James, the deadliest parish on the face of the earth, at this point in 2023, St. James had 142. In 2024, it is 42 less. In Trelawney, at this point last year, Trelawney had 13. I think, well, there's an increase in Trelawney of 18 now. In St. Anne, 2023, St. Anne had 60 at this point. In 2024, St. Anne only had 38. And it continues that way. That's a way to look at it going down. Let me look to see. Well, there's another increase. There's an increase in Manchester. Last year it was 29. This year it is now 38. Um, let me see if there is any more increase. There's an increase in St. Andrew Central. Last year it was 41. This year it's 57. Uh, in St. Andrew North, last year it was 38. This year it's 49. So there are a few increases uh, that we're looking at. But the subtotal at the bottom right-hand corner of the chart, at this point last year, we were at 1,013 murders. At the same point this year, we are at 842 murders. Isn't that a reduction? Isn't that significant? Isn't that 100 and look like about 60 or are, are 70 are people less dying? That is significant. If we can reduce murders by 170 people less dying for the next five years, five times 
100 that are 500 and 5 sevens 35 that are 800 and, 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 and 50 people less in a five years ago dead you know so if 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 the if all that the investment that they are putting into the security forces and the strategies that they are using to fight crime continues for the next five years we can have a significant reduction in murders in jamaica you know isn't that the goal if you get to the point where you can sleep with your windows and doors open i'm just saying but people as i said to you i'm not a statistician and i don't know nothing about statistics but i just thought that i should put this presentation together to give you an understanding now the pmp when peter bunting used to speak on national security a few months ago every time the numbers reduce him always oh it's a lie it's a lie they're, they're, they're playing with the numbers until it got to the point where we realized that we are in fact experiencing a reduction in crime him stop talking about national security now he might talk about hotel workers and tourism he might talk about finance he might talk about all health care he might christopher tufton because there's nothing here for him to cause and all they want to do is to oppose the murder rate is going down all other serious crimes are on the decline we are heading in the right direction now i want to talk a little bit more about the pmp and their propensity to breed crimes and criminals now we all know what the crimes are in our region and we also know how they are lumped together we know that drugs money and guns work together this is it man we are dealing with drugs i make whole heap of money and he must defend and protect the money so he need gun isn't it so am i the only person who understand it to be so now here on your screen is mr isaac buchanan the PMP just selected him to run as MP in Eastern Portland. No, it was bad on the 15th of September when a beer criminal walked onto the stage of the PMP platform and their national conference at the National Arena. But little did we know that something was cooking. Because after the conference, we heard that it was Vibes Cartel who paid for the conference. And that he is paying for something. Now, Mr. Vibes Cartel was released from prison recently. The judge did not say that he was innocent of the charge that brought him to prison. And what was that charge? He was charged for murder of Clive Williams, Clive Lizard Williams. But they ended up setting him free because of a TNT jury. Nobody said that cartel is innocent. All the evidence in the trial had proven that he's guilty. But he was set freed on a technicality. But Lizard's still dead. Lizard no free. Who killed Lizard? No him was defended by one Mr. Isaac Buchanan. But Mr. Isaac Buchanan defended a convicted criminal and got him released on a technicality. But Mr. Isaac Buchanan himself had run-ins with the law, both locally and internationally. Mr. Isaac Buchanan is a farmer drug mule, is a farmer drug dealer. And as we say, where drugs is money and guns are because drug dealership is a criminal activity and criminals have to defend the business and the earnings from the business so mr isaac buchanan years ago was charged arrested and charged for dealing in drugs in jamaica he went to court he paid a fine I think it was a million dollar. No member. But to show you that Mr. Isaac Buchanan made up his mind that he was doing crime. Years later, 
him decided to push drugs in the Americas, the United States of America. He was arrested and charged, went to prison for 10 years. While in prison, Mr. Isaac Buchanan decided to study law. You know what I mean? So innocent. Him, they are prisoners study law. You can't get a career anyway if somebody willing to hire you. So him study the law. Him do him thing. Him pass him bar exam. Come a Jamaica work as a lawyer. Mr. Weiss at Buchanan applied to be a JP a few times and he was turned down. Why? Because he did not think that he should have been honest enough to include in his application that he is a twice convicted drug runner. No, he never included in paperwork say he is a drug done. So he was denied. And him bright enough, I look like the law fly up in him head. Him carry the costos. Got a quote. Because that's how PMP are in there. You can't know PMP by them behavior. You know? They feel like say, them must. And them affi. And you must affi. That's how them behave. Because you know? they own Jamaica. Anyway, the judge run him out of the courthouse. Lo and behold, him find the loophole in a cartel case. The tainted jury. And he hammered at the loophole there until it turned out in his favor. But just because cartel pay for the PMP conference, the PMP have to pay him back. He want ISAT to get a seat. So then run out the little man named Colin Bell down at East Portland. And he have to Hold on your head like a puppy dog because the white master say so you have to come out. And through cartel pay for the conference, you have to just move, step aside, my cartel big liar can take over. Now tell me something, Jamaicans. This man, who is a drug dan, you feel comfortable? Suppose he say, he obey good enough and he go in. Are the people of Jamaica fool enough and vote him in on East Portland? You feel comfortable when the drug bill them reach parliament for sign and for pass? You feel comfortable this man I go vote on a drug bill? Everybody get up in a society at talk about rehabilitation. Our parliament is not a rehabilitation center. Rehabilitation centers are built all over the island. You can go learn woodwork. You can go learn interpersonal skills. How to relate with each other. The parliament is not a rehabilitation center. So what is this nonsense the PMP come up with? About people need rehabilitation. Where that come from? Huh? The same PMP who called out a few years ago. To a woman where I work, I must see in Salar, whatever the place name. 30 odd years ago, she had a drug conviction, I must see two or three. And the PMP called out for she move from the office where she had working in a car. She mustn't work in a no government agency. But my God, man, a woman did just sit down around one day, so do her work, and never get no trouble. And I this a criminal, and you want to take fling in a parliament for go make laws for me. If I sat Buchanan and go in a parliament, me I go right in front of parliament go sell drugs and nobody can arrest me. Well, Jamaicans make me know nothing to about you know. This man have a cloud. Dark cloud hanging over his head. Name drug conviction. But he's been led by somebody who don't care. His leader always come before the camera up on the TV. Take a mic. Anyway, see a mic. He head gone. Just tell a bag of lie and tell you anything I have to take it. Jamaicans, do you realize that every criminal who exists in a Jamaica now join up with Mark Golden People National Party? A matter of fact, the name has been changed to Prisoners National Party. 
Yes, I got it name now. Don't you see that Jamaica has changed and is changing right before our eyes? Law and order is taking its time to come back in our society. It's a long haul, of course. And it will take some more time. But some semblance of law and order is coming back in our society. And criminal no like law and order. So thus, all of the criminal them go join the PMP now because they want to fling out Andrew. So that PMP can come free up the thing. You know that song? Free up the thing. Yes, man. How that them believe? PMP no believe in a law and order. And good governance. Them no business about them be something there. And that's why you see every criminal from all walks of life, every nook and cranny, a giant the PMP and a cheer on the PMP. Because other than Mark G promised them all manner of evil. Them expecting the PMP if you can free up back the thing. If you make the society broke away again, if you take one of the one million years to get it back and set it again. Do we realize what is happening before your eyes? It's an all-out assault by every string in the society against the Prime Minister. Because bit by bit, step by step, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, he's bringing back law and order in our society. And the Jamaican life, the Jamaican uh, uh, standard of living is being improved. Them no want that. And so we have the new phenomenon that was birthed out of Mark Golden's People's National Party. The party which has now been changed to the Prisoner's National Party. Every popular prisoner. Isn't it mysterious too? Only who kill people and who push drugs and go to prison can be prominent in the new PNP. That don't frighten no Jamaicans. That no strike uno, that no make uno nervous. I wonder if uno really pay attention. Who is going to rise up and join me on this mission to protect our beloved country? The one man will rise up and decide, say, Jamaica must be better. Under God, increasing beauty, fellowship, and prosperity. Them out to cut him down. And what is so disgusting about it? Uno see them black people. I follow the white man. I kill off uno black brother. Uno no realize say what the white man I preach. No good for uno. The white man is now in charge of the prisoners' national party. Who will say, count me in? I will join the fight to protect Jamaica, the land of my birth, the land of my life, Jamaica land we love. Who will join in ensuring that truth and peace is echoed through the airwaves and stop joining the bandwagon? And cheering against your own because the white man said so. Who will stand up and fight to protect our island? Where the white man never even care if he even have a passport, any recognition of himself with him, don't identify with us until 2011 because Porsche promised him a, car a cabinet seat, him go get a, a passport. Do you realize that this white man have been living free in our country for all his life? Well, so him say, God, there's evidence to show him never born ya. Who will open my eyes and see? Say so Mark Golden is not good for Jamaica. This man have assets in a Cayman, British Virgin Island. Eh? The latest thing Mark Golden do. Is plan up with the British Virgin Island, the land of his home, where all and business the money reaches there. British Virgin Island. Plan up with the Prime Minister and the government. 
for them bring cartel come perform a concert. And one brave black woman, the deputy prime minister of the British Virgin Island, have to lick out and say, no, not all over my dead body. This man is a criminal. And I will not have him come here and show case in front of people. Do you realize that Mark Golden is not good for Jamaica? How many of you are going to make the white man continue for trick on They tricked our, our four parents and turned them in a slave and tell them, say, somebody white are going to come down out of the cloud in a white gown and a white horse going to save them. Many of our ancestors died because they were depending on this white somebody with blue eye to step out upon cloud come save. Who? will stand up and say it is my responsibility to save my country from the prisoners national party is there any patriotic jamaican left out there who is not willing to follow the white man and kill your black brother huh who will stand up and fight against and push back against the prisoners national party what good my Jamaican family pay attention?